While the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II is the king of close air support, CAS, helping ground forces with its devastating array of weapons, many people are astonished to learn that it is also capable of air-to-air -air combat. Even the best fighter pilots are wary of getting into a close-in, turning dogfight with a lowly, mud-moving A-10 because it isn't optimized for air superiority and lacks key capabilities like high-speed radar and radar-guided long-range missiles that make its fighter brethren such air-to-air -air supremos. Here are five reasons why no nation on Earth wants to go to war with an A-10 Warthog. Before starting the main topic of the day, let's learn something about the Warthog first. The A-10 Thunderbolt II, affectionately known as the Warthog, has been in service with the United States Air Force since 1976. The attack plane was planned as a replacement for piston-engined planes like the A-1 Sky Raider on the one hand, and as a deterrent to the U.S. Army's development of superior assault helicopters on the other. The U.S. Air Force was concerned that technologically advanced Army helicopters could take over the close air support duty that its aircraft had grudgingly conducted in Korea and Vietnam, undermining the rationale why multi-purpose jets were required. The A-10 Thunderbolt, or more commonly known as the A-10 Warthog, is a U.S. Air Force close air support Avenger that will take a battering and yet find a way to shower you with her low-altitude armor-piercing bullets. The A-10 is one of the most respected pieces of equipment available to fighting men and women, as seen by its track record. One of the largest automatic cannons ever placed on an aircraft is the 30mm GAU 8A cannon that mounts on the front of the A-10 with its barrel protruding from the nose. The A-10 can remain longer in the war zone in all kinds of conditions, including limited visibility and black doors, because the pilots are shielded by titanium armor, which also covers sections of the flight control system. In October 1975, the first production A-10A was delivered to Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. It was built primarily for close air support missions, with the capacity to combine heavy military cargoes, a lengthy loiter time, and a big fighting radius, all of which proved to be valuable assets to the U.S. and its allies during Operation Desert Storm and Operation Noble Anvil. During the Gulf War, A-10s performed 8,100 sorties and launched 90% of the AGM-65 Maverick missiles with a mission capability rate of 95.7%. Because of the daring of her pilots and her performance above the battlefield, the A-10 Thunderbolt has gained a reputation. Let's get started with the top 5 reasons. At number 5, we have its close air support. The A-10 can fly beneath the weather at altitudes of 100 feet since it can fly at slower speeds of 300. This allows pilots to see enemy targets with their bare eyes, allowing them to drop bombs, fire rockets, and open fire with the 30mm gun while still in close proximity to friendly forces. Piloting an A-10, in an interview with Scout Warrior Lt. Col. Ryan Hayden, deputy of the 23rd Fighter Group at Moody Air Force Base, discussed the Warthog. We get up close and personal with our subjects. We conduct it at a distance of 50 meters from people. I occasionally notice hands and people waving. I can discern the difference between good guys and bad guys and shoot if I get close and low enough," Hayden stated. Depending on the target and angle range of the aircraft, the bombs, rockets, and cannon attack foes up close or from miles away. We deliver the munitions by flying from a base station, pointing the aircraft towards the ground and then pulling the trigger when we get to the desired range," he stated. Both the lightning and sniper pods on the A-10 are equipped with infrared and electro-optical sensors that can locate targets for the pilot. Like the F-15E and F-16, the aircraft uses the same aiming pod. However, most fighters are unable to switch between the two targeting pods, whereas we can thanks to our software," Hayden explained. The A-10 is equipped with a wide range of weapons, including Joint Direct Attack Munitions JDAM, GPS-guided bombs, as well as GBU-38s, GBU-31s, GBU-54s, MK-82s, MK-84s, AGM-65s, Maverick missiles, AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles and rockets, as well as Illumination flares, Jammer pods, and other defensive countermeasures. According to Air Force statements, the aircraft can carry 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance, with eight pylon stations flying under the wings and three under the fuselage. Next up is the armament. The total count includes a 30mm GAU 8A cannon capable of firing up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance from eight underwing and three under fuselage pylon stations, a 500-pound MK-82, and 2,000-pound MK-84 series low high-drag bombs incendiary cluster bombs, effects munitions, mine dispensing munitions, and AGM-65 Maverick and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. That's a serious plane with a bad attitude. At number 3, we have survivability. The leading edges of the wing and tail of the A-10 have a honeycomb panel design that makes them more resistant to battle damage, 
The front landing gear strangely retracts under the wings while still protruding out of the fuselage. The Warthog can survive many direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive rounds if it can land with its landing gear up and its self-sealing fuel cells are shielded by internal and exterior foam. Captain Kim Campbell's 75th Fighter Squadron A-10 was hit by ground fire in 2003 while returning from a close air support mission near Baghdad. The starboard vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, aft fuselage, and engine were all severely damaged. The plane became uncontrollable after being hit, rolling left nose down. After attempting several methods to regain control, she activated the backup mechanical flight control system. The jet responded and she landed back at her forward base with the help of her wingman. Number 2 is its range and support. The Warthog's flight range is roughly 2,500 miles, which could bring you from New York City to Los Angeles, California, thanks to the General Electric TF-34 GE100 turbofan engines, which can reach speeds of around 450 miles per hour or Mach 7.5, making the Thunderbolt incredibly dangerous. The A-10 Warthog is invaluable to U.S. ground soldiers and plays a crucial part in military strategy in the Middle East and beyond. I'm glad we were able to keep this fleet fully operational, Arizona Representative Ruben Gallego said. I'll continue to fight to preserve this aircraft to ensure that the warfighter on the ground gets their air support. The A-10 was created with close air support missions in mind. Its massive and diverse weaponry, lengthy loiter time above the battlefield, precise weapons delivery, and unfriendly field capability are all well-developed enough to put it ahead of the ground forces around it. The low-altitude safety and targeting enhancement upgrade, according to the U.S. Air Force, provided computerized weapon aiming equipment and autopilot as well as a ground collision warning system that includes multi-band communications, GPS, and inertial navigation systems, infrared and electronic countermeasures against air-to-air -air and air-to-surface threats. To put it another way, if you try to shoot at our ground forces, we will not only shoot back, but we will unleash hell on you right where you are. And the number one reason is the A-10's grit. The A-10 pilots have night vision capability, allowing them to fly missions at any time after dark. In order to maintain the A-10 on the battlefield, it was also constructed with a quick repair turnaround time in mind. Damaged wing skins can be replaced in the field, a cannon that produces so much smoke while firing that it resembles a forest fire, and a Gatling gun that fires bullets the size of beer bottles, earn the Warthog the moniker Cross of Death. The pilots who fly these winged marbles and the ground crews who maintain them are unquestionably the most crucial aspects to remember. Our combatants are true heroes and the A-10 is no exception. Thunderbolt is just another tool in the struggle for liberty and it's a very effective tool. That concludes today's video. What are your thoughts on the Warthog? Is there anything that can stop it? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching.